All right. Cool. Um, so we have another interviewee that we're about to bring on, and uh, it is Will Larch from the Material team. Will, come on over. Welcome, good to see you. Hey. Always the best dressed engineer mm -hmm. I know. And, uh, Are you enjoying the event, the event today? It's wonderful, yeah. isn't it? It is. Yeah, it they've is. done such a great job. It's so nice to see everybody so inspired and excited, and you know, we're all here for the thing that we love. So it's kind of a <laughs> <laughs> kind of a great thing to do. Yeah. Yes. Well, we've collected just like with some of our other guests. We've already par uh, gone through the internet and seen what questions people are asking and what you might like to answer. And so we've picked out a few for you. I'm uh, ready. I can do this. Go, okay. Go All right. Here we go. Can you talk about how material on Flutter has changed now that desktop support is being added? Some uh, of our most familiar widgets are typically in one certain form factor, but that changes with desktop. So true. Uh, we uh, in Material are really interested in our guidance for desktop and making sure that we have a good experience for developers and designers who are using Material and designing for desktop because user expectations are different. We know this. So we've been working closely with the Flutter team specifically on those new guidelines that we'll be uh, releasing um, early in the next year. And they'll have inside them a couple of new components, uh, one of which we showed today in the uh, vision keynote that Matthias was talking about. Mm -hmm. It's a tree, kind of like for, um, for like file system directory Oh, going. the data tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a tree, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, there's a, an earlier version of that and a sample that just landed in the samples repository for desktop. That's right, yes. Uh, yeah, so github.com slash flutter slash samples. Yeah, so that's one. And uh, an engineer on my team is working on a navigation rail right now, mm. um, which is something that we also showed. Um, it's it, it's uh, bottom nav when you're on mo uh, mobile, but then when you're on desktop, it takes all those buttons and puts them on the side, kind of like you would see in Gmail uh, okay. on the web. And so we're working on having automatic experiences to be able to go between those for people who aren't working with a designer so that they can have a good mobile experience and a good desktop experience. But then the biggest thing is that we've been working with um, the Flutter team on what we call density, which is how much room right. we give to individual components. Mm -hmm. Material design was created mobile first, so it's all about touch. So even when we're on the web, we're really concerned about making sure there's enough room for people's fingers and 48 uh, pixel uh, mm -hmm. touch uh, targets. Mm -hmm. We'll be reducing that, making click targets. They're more appropriate for a mouse or some other right. kind of mouse-like input. Right. Yeah. So those are the changes that will be coming or have already begun to show up for uh, desktop support in the designs. That's great. Yeah. yeah, the density thing especially is interesting because if you talk about potentially having something running on like an Android TV and you have that living room experience. You want the opposite. The density for that is completely different than what you'd have on a... Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, at I.O., when we were talking uh, in the Beyond Mobile mm -hmm. talk, you know, we were talking about uh, passive experiences, part mm -hmm. of the ambient computing world. And a lot of times when you're dealing with uh, things that are passive that people aren't interacting with, you maybe have one call to action or two, like a button or two, um, and they have to be big, and mm -hmm. they have to be easily seen, and from far away, as people get up to them, maybe they can change, but... Yeah, so that's the opposite of the kind of density that we're looking at on desktop. Then the great thing about our density subsystem, as we're calling it, is that it'll be flexed enough to go in both directions, larger and smaller. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. So I, I also have a question, but I have a feeling this is going to take us off on a bit of a tangent. So I, I, know, you have, oh, I know you have one more. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask, what's the process of things getting added to material, right? Uh, oh. Who decides really which components are added and what they're like? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Because you're, sure. you're an engineer, right? More than, more than working on the design spec itself, Correct. right? Correct, I am an engineer, yeah. Um, but the great thing about working in material, even if you're an engineer, is that it's a very, very collaborative environment. Um, when somebody, a designer or an engineer, has an idea for a component, it becomes something that everybody kind of puts their input into, and small teams may go off and iterate on what they think um, the actual spec for something would be, but they have to listen to the engineers to make sure that it's, you know, a cromulent idea and then not something <laughs> that just wouldn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Which we had seen before in the past, like with the very first version of Material, they weren't working with engineers, and some things then had to change later mm -hmm. on as we realized what was possible and what wasn't. So a lot of times it's either just somebody has an idea or we see something, or people in the real world are using it so much that we're like, we can't ignore this. Uh, something that recently happened that's really interesting is a lot of apps 
um, for the past few years have had fabs embedded into the bottom nav. Mm -hmm. Like the center button is actually a fab. I think you see that on Instagram, Evernote. Yeah. And then that creates whatever you're in. And so we had been telling people caution against using that because uh, we think that's an anti-pattern. But we hadn't finished the research on it, which um, my team actually mm. recently helped with. We built out Flutter prototypes for a bottom nav with a fab in several different designs that our designers came up with. We tested them in uh, Tamil in India. Uh, we tested them in Hindu, Hindi in India, uh, Portuguese in Brazil, and uh, English in America, and found out that people understand it, they like it, and now we've removed the caution from the guidelines. So if you go to the guidelines now, it actually won't say anymore a caution for that pattern. <laughs> Oh. And so that's just the real world was using it. We saw it. We verified, is this a good idea? It is. And hopefully uh, soon we'll be bringing that as an actual feature into the component in Flutter to make that's it easier really for people. That's really great. Feedback in action. Yes. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, I have one last, one last question for you. This yes. is one we got during the break, and I was like, that's a will question right there. <laughs> this is from uh, Michael T. Soa. Hi, Michael. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your last name right there, Michael. And he asked about the new material gallery. He said, is the new gallery going to be available on the Play Store? And I thought maybe we could let that lead us into the material gallery, we could show it to folks a little bit. Yes, the new gallery um, uh, should be on the Play Store today. Oh, wow. Do a refresh, Michael. Maybe you'll see it. <laughs> Pull the refresh in the Play Store app. Yeah. Um, but do you want to just real quick take a brief tour of it? Because we also landed yeah. it in our GitHub samples repo, so folks can check out the code there. Yeah, um, this was a real fun collaboration that we did with a, a design agency in London called Toaster. Yeah, let's get into the laptop here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we do have gallery right here. And we have the gallery itself, and then some tool package, some packages of tools that are used for the translations, I think it is. Mm -hmm. and, we have a lot of stuff. internationalization stuff in this app. I believe we support over 50 languages. Oh, wow. And we, not, and we wanted this to be a great example for internationalization best practices and accessibility best practices. And so we actually internationalized our accessibility. So if you're on a screen reader in China and you want it played back in Chinese, it'll still work for you. Oh, wow. So, that is really great. I, we're pretty proud of that. And yeah. so this is the gallery itself, right? Yeah, but turn it on in dark mode. That's where it really okay. shines. So there's, yeah, here I know the there's settings. a menu here. Theme. Theme, got it. I'm not cool enough to have my there we go. Dark Very mode cool. just globally. Yeah, we, we actually designed dark theme first for this because we know that that's <laughs> what our audience mostly uses. Yes. You know? So just like we were mobile, we're mobile first, we're dark first now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think everybody likes dark theme. Isn't that a world we could live yeah, in? Yeah, that's well, true. I, mean, I use it for my editors. I've that's seen true. so many uh, mentions online saying, come over to the dark side, but I guess now it's truly come over to the dark side. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, um, so what's, like if I wanted to start with this, what would I be looking at here? What would I go well, check out? You'll see the top row is a carousel that's got um, some studies in it. These mm -hmm. are uh, official material design studies that we built out to be totally responsive. So this is Rally, it's uh, like a, a finance app. But yeah, drag that corner until the break point. Uh, keep going left, yeah. Hold on a second. I'm going to close my email. It's always a good, good thing to do when you're oh, on a yeah? camera So feed. the people don't know your conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, go so to, there, we go. there we go, the mobile view happens, yeah. So okay. we actually worked really closely with Hans Muller, um, who's uh, the TL on the Flutter side for material, like mm -hmm. I'm the TL for, uh, wait, he's the Flutter, he's the material TL in Flutter, I'm the Flutter TL in material. We're very close partners. <laughs> and he, uh, we worked with him on figuring out what uh, best practices for adaptive layout we wanted mm -hmm. to show people. So uh, feel free to go into any of those studies and see how we're doing adaptive layout by looking at the media query and having some helper functions in there. You can actually take our adaptive.dart um, file if you see it anywhere, just bring it with you into your next project and know that uh, that's a performant way that we officially endorse for making uh, different layouts. Mm -hmm. I know that was a question that you went into this project with, is how do we make it responsive, and that's the best practice that emerged, right? Yes. Use a media query and let that define how you how you choose to build yes. one layout versus another. Mm -hmm. We really weren't sure, and it turns yeah. out that, that using a media query really is the best way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so this is another study, this is Crane. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you go back out of this, you can see that underneath the studies, we've, we're bringing in the demos from the original gallery into the different sections. Um, we've got, shrine, yep. Yeah, we got shrine. shrine, yep. And then underneath them, oh, well, there I am. Yeah, the ginger scarf. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't we know that you were models. in there. I had never yeah, seen that before. Yeah, we can't afford models. Oh, I'm going to see it so. every time now. You know, <laughs> uh, Shrine actually has a new uh, a variant on a 
new component in it. So this has, when you're on mobile, the expanding app bar at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We actually worked with the designers to figure out what that would look like on desktop for the very first time, and so they put it over here on the side. Oh, what was the expanding bottom sheet is now the expanding the right? Side sheet? Side sheet, I guess. there you go. We're just calling it an expanding sheet right now, go. yeah. And then what this animation would look like. So we're, we've, the material designers are really considering what is important for desktop. Cool. Um, and then here we have just, you know, your regular uh, component demos for learning things. Uh, what's really great is each of them has an, sorry, not each of them, many of them have an options menu where you see slightly different versions of the components. And then if you click this button, code sample, you'll see the actual code for the sample that you're looking at. So this should one-to-one -one match up to what's going on over here, which should be really useful nice. to people. Yeah. So, yeah. so again, this is right now in our samples repo at github.com slash flutter slash samples. And this hosted version that's on the web, you can get to right now at uh, flutter.github.io slash samples. That's right, yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Isn't that's that great? about that's really all the time great. we have so far oh, uh, for you. So I got to say goodbye. Fast. We're going to take some more questions. <laughs> thank uh, you so much, Will. Thank it's you been so awesome. much for My joining pleasure. us. Thank you for having yeah. me. Uh, you can leave your microphone right there and go back to, to enjoying the event. All right. So we have time right. for so one more question. What do we have? Yeah, we've got time for one more question, and then we're going to be cutting to a few more talks. So the first question here, and the last question, is from Patrick in Kenya. And Patrick is wondering, how do I override the red screen, like the red error screen, when you overflow a widget and oh. the red and white oh. and yellow lines uh, in the widget? Right. Yeah, so uh, I used to know how to do this. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, I know, for I've those of you who may not know, uh, sometimes when you have something go horribly wrong mm -hmm. in constructing all of your widgets and, and putting together the puzzle piece of your app, um, you'll get a red screen that uh, gives you feedback and tells you something did not work and this is what it was and you should go fix it and then I'll show you what it looks like. Um, and I've seen on GitHub recently that people have been asking for a feature uh, to be able to override that, but I think that it already is uh, possible to override. Let's Tell you what, let's go to the, the, the laptop here for a second, and um, I'm... It would be the I, error I, widget. I, used, I literally used to know how to do this. <laughs> um, let me do flutter error widget. Uh, let's see what we can find, yeah. I'm just going to Google this. Um, okay. uh, so the community provides. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's amazing, really. Uh, so okay. there you go. You can yeah. actually override the, yeah, the red screen with whatever you like. That's that's it. It's this bit, the error widget builder. So yeah, there's a there's a widget with a, a static method. I think it's a builder that you could just override that, and then that becomes the builder for your red mm -hmm. widget. And you can make it some other color or blank in your production app or whatever you like. So uh, thank you to the Ayush who wrote this article. There you go. Mm -hmm.